Hi folks, Mr. Ropeson here, statistics. All right, so we are looking at independence today, and then we're going to look at independence in either Venn diagrams or two-way tables, or probably both. There's just two examples and, and one definition here. This is, should be a much shorter one than the last one. So conditional probability and independence. So two events, A and B, are independent if the occurrence of one does not change the probability that the other event will happen. In other words, probabilities or events A and B are independent if the probability of A, given that B had happened first, is still equal to just the probability of A, and the probability of B, given that A happened first, is still just the probability of B. So the other event, ha one event does not change the probability of the other event happening. All right. Now, when we do this, this can change our multiplication rule. So instead of having to use the conditional probability for the, you know, the other part of the multiplication for the second event happening, we can still just use the probability of that second event happening, all right? which changes our multiplication rule to that. So before, for the probability of A and B looked like this. The probability of A and B was the probability of A, and then it was times the probability of B given that A happened first. But now this probability is just equal to the probability of B. So that makes our lives a little simpler when we're doing some of these problems. All right, so let's take a look at this little two-way table here. And we're going to figure out if events are independent. So we're looking at being female and having pierced ears. Are they independent? Well, let's call A the being female. And let's call event B having pierced ears. So we want to know what's the probability of A and what's the probability of A given B. So the probability of someone being female is, let's see, that's 88 out of 178. What's the probability of being female given that they have pierced ears? So now we're only looking out of the pierced ears with people. So there are 103 people total with pierced ears. 84 of them are female, so that's 84 out of 103. Did these two things equal each other? Definitely not. All right, so we can type them into our calculator if we want and get decimals, but we can already tell that they're definitely not going to be equal to each other. So they are not equal, not the same. So that means it's not independent. All right, we saw an example in class about how independence works. So some things that are independent are like sometimes pulling cards, flipping coins are always independent from each other, rolling dice are always independent from each other. For instance, like so no, no matter what, when you flip a coin, the probability of head is always one half. Whenever you roll a die, the probability of getting, say, a six is always one out of six. There's six sides. So what's the probability of getting heads on a coin and rolling a six on a die? So technically, it would be getting the heads on the coin. So it would look like this. Probability of heads times the probability of getting a six, given that you got heads on the coin. But this doesn't even make sense, all right? The, the head is not going to affect what happens with the coin. So it's just probability of heads times probability of six. So we'd get one half times one sixth, which would give us one twelfth. All right, because those are independent events. All right, so let's look at an example here with independent events. This one was tricky, very, very tricky. So Charlie enjoys watching birds at her bird feeder every morning while she eats breakfast. Cardinals and sparrows show up to feed independently. The probability Charlie will see both a sparrow and a cardinal is that. So the probability sparrow and cardinal is 0 0.512. The probability that she sees a sparrow but not a cardinal, so the probability she sees sparrow and not a cardinal is 0.288. What is the probability that Charlie will see a cardinal at the bird feeder? So we just want the probability of C. All right, we can try and organize this in a Venn diagram. We could also try and organize this in a two-way table. Any, either one of them is fine. All right, we've got the intersection here, 0.512. We've got sparrow and not cardinal. That's this part out here, which is 
and that's it. Everything should add up to one, but we're missing this part here and the outside part. We are trying to find the probability of cardinal, so that is this whole circle, so that's going to be the 0. 0.512 plus this number here. All right. The other thing we are told is that they are independent. All right. That tells us that the probability of sparrow intersect cardinal is equal to the probability of sparrow times the probability of cardinal. So that's the shortened multiplication formula from last slide. All right, we know this guy. We were told that. That's 0.512. Probability of sparrow, we can actually get by just adding these two numbers up. So that is 0.288 plus 0.512 times the probability of cardinal. All right, so this is just 0.8. So now if we just divide both sides by 0.8, that will give us the probability of cardinal. So 0.512 divided by 0.8 gives us that the probability of seeing a cardinal is 0.64. So that means this whole circle is 0.64. So that means this section here is 0.64 minus 0 0.512. 0 0.64 is actually our answer. I mean, that's what they were asking us for, but I'm just going to keep filling this out. So if we subtract those, we get point, what was that? Zero, no, 0.128. Yeah, 0.128. And then the probability of seeing neither, if we add up all those three and then subtract it from one, is going to be 0 0.072. So we can get all the numbers here and find out any of the probabilities we want from that. All right, now we could also do this using the two-way table. And some of you might find that easier. I don't know. But let's see. We've got Sparrow. Yeah, we see it. No, we don't see it. And then we've got cardinal. Yeah, we see that. No, we don't see that. So this is just a completely different way of doing this problem. All right, it's going to use some of the same techniques. So let's see. We're told the 0 0.512 is both. So that's yes for both, 0 0.512. We're using probability, so it should add up to 1. Sparrow and not cardinal. Sparrow, yes. Cardinal, no. 0.288. If we add those together, that gives us our 0.8. That leaves us 0.2 right here. And I think that's all we can get from this, which was pretty much all we could get from here, too. All right, now we're going to use this same bit of information here. And that would get us this same answer here. The probability of cardinal would be 0.64. All right, so it would be the exact same work, exact same stuff. And then we would do the same work here to fill in this. So we would subtract between those to get 0.128. Subtract between those to get 0 0.072. We could add up those to get what goes here, 0.36. And we could get the same answers from this as we got from there. Probability of cardinal is still the 0.64 right there. That was tricky. Next one. Oh, so in any given year, California has to deal with devastating fires and with large earthquakes. Each occur independently of each other. The probability the state will experience both a large earthquake and fires in a given year is 0.131. So that's both. The probability that California experienced fires but not earthquakes is 0.452. What is the probability of California getting an earthquake in a year and not having fires? So we want the probability of earthquake and not fire. That is what we are trying to find. All right, so we have options. We can try and do the Venn diagram, or we can try and do the two-way table. I think I'm going to go with the two-way table. Really, you can go either way you want. So we've got earthquake, yes, no. We've got fires happening as we speak, so that would probably be a yes for that one. Probability of fires has probably increased in the last couple of years. So we're dealing with probability, so we're adding up to one. Probability of both, so that's yes and yes, is 0.131. The probability of getting fires, but not an earthquake. So fires, yes. Earthquake, no, is 0.452. So we can add those up. And I believe that gives us a 0.583. We can subtract here. 
That's 0.417. I'm just finding things that we can find easily here, guys. I'm not even concentrating on what we're trying to find yet. All right, now, let's see. They occur independently. So independent means the probability of earthquake and fire is the probability of earthquake times the probability of fire. All right, we have that. That's 0.3. Sorry, one, three, one. Probability of earthquake, that'd be this. We don't know that. Probability of fire, though, we do know that. That's right here. That's the 0.583. So now we just divide both sides by 0.583. And that's going to give us the probability of an earthquake. All right, so if we divide those two, I believe we get 0.225 as the probability of of an earthquake. So that's this right here. All right, now we can fill out all the rest of this. So we got 0 0.094 by subtracting those. If we subtract between these two, we get 0.323. We can either add these two up or subtract between those. We get 0.775. And now we just look for what we want. Earthquake, yes. Fire, no. So those overlap right there. That should be our answer. All right, so we just use this independence multiplication rule to get that one extra probability. And once we've got that, we can fill out the rest of the table. Yay, we got it. All right, so that's how we can do the independent stuff with either Venn diagrams or two-way tables. And again, it's up to you which one you want to use, either a Venn diagram or a two-way table.